Hello everybody and welcome to Lights Up, the official podcast of the WNBL. I'm Grantley Bernard alongside the great Sharon Milner and this is our middle segment of the week and we like to call it Talk It Up. There's a little bit to talk about this week but I don't think we can say much more, although we're going to try, about Jenna O'Hay's performance on Saturday night. 35 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. Now, when she's on, she is on. Absolute machine. Yep. How much longer can we keep her at the WNBL? How much longer until we see the big European clubs coming with their big fat checkbooks? Well, I think in Jenna's defence, they probably came knocking last season because this is, what, her fourth season in a row where she's just been really the standout player of the league, you know, at a part of a team that's at the top of the ladder, and no thanks to her. So she's um, just on fire, absolutely in a purple patch at the moment. 35 points is huge, but she's also rounding out the other stats columns as well, making her team better. And yeah, Dandenong are looking very dangerous with Jenna O'Hay in that form. She's been a fantastic player. She's a great all-round player. Got good size about her, so she, you know she can play as a big point guard. You know she's uh, obviously fits into the forward spot. She could probably play as an undersized centre if you if you needed her to. So there's no question she's the best all-round player in the league. Are we saying right now she's the best player in the league? Yeah, contentious. I do like sitting on the fence, but I'll I'll say this one on the line. She's the best player in the league for mine, mainly for what you mentioned in terms of her versatility. She can play any role, couple that with the fact that she's a big game player. She's shown that in the last three final series in the WNBL, I have no doubt. She'll do it again in this final series. And um, yeah, there's just a direct correlation when she's healthy, she dominates. Um, the only thing that could really stop her is injuries. So let's just knock on a bit of wood for that for her, but she's a star. That's a fair call. And, and you do mention the injuries when Bullen won the title a couple of years ago, she came into that game with a knee wrap like a golf bag on. <laughs> and there was no way she probably should have played in that game. Uh, you would know from the inside, A, how bad that injury was, but B, how mentally tough she is. Yeah, she is. She's always had that trait of just, you know, she'll play through pain, she'll play through whatever. She's just, once she steps over that white line, it's all or nothing for Jenna. So, you know, if she's over the line, you know, she's going to do her best and, and perform well. And, and it was more the, the final series before that, I think, when she really had a breakout year after suffering a few injuries when um, people like me might have just ridden on her shoulders a bit through the way of the finals and she nearly got us a championship with Lauren Jackson standing in our way. So she's just an absolute star. And if we lose her to Europe, um, you know, you can understand because of the money value that she'll attract there. But Saturday night, she wasn't playing in Monday night C-grade women's. She was playing against Sydney in an LA Sparks opponent of hers in April Sykes. And she just, 35 points is unbelievable. That's uh, fair enough. So have you been playing Monday night Sea grade women? <laughs> have, you, have you pulled the boots on since you've retired? Oh, I've had a bit of a training run, but yeah, the uh, old injuries are creeping back. So now I'll just sit on the side and cheer on. But yeah, maybe a Sea grade women's team out there want to give me a dial up. But you are making a comeback this season, aren't you, in the winter? <laughs> uh, of sorts. Yeah, so of I'll sorts. be a true veteran role in my tracksuit, you know, shivering on the bench and getting a call up if I need. Stay tuned for that one. We'll bring you more details as they come to hand. Uh, you talk about injuries and you have to talk about Lauren Jackson. Uh, injuries have robbed the Caps and the WNBL of, uh, of Lauren this season, but she still has a big chance to make her mark. She is in the running as one of six Australian sporting legends to be immortalised in wax at Madame Tussauds in Sydney. That's, that would be quite some feat. That would be. Everyone out there just... Get online and vote for her because she absolutely deserves this. What a champion. Was it her fourth Olympics, you know, flag bearer, star of the game, possibly the best um, basketball this country's ever seen. So I would just love to see her immortalised in wax and maybe get a photo next to it myself. At six foot five, they're going to need a fair bit of wax to build that one, I would have thought. <laughs> yeah, they will. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. And as I say, get out there and vote basketball fans, sports fans. Um, yeah, I'd just love to see that happen. So you can get onto that, go to the Madame Tussauds uh, Facebook page and uh, click on Lauren Jackson as many times as is humanly possible. Let's get, uh, let's get uh, Loz waxed. <laughs> let's do it. Well, sounds a bit wrong, but <laughs> you know what we mean. <laughs> uh, we've spoken uh, quite a bit this season about the impact that the imports have had in the league this season. Of course, when we talk about imports, we're talking usually about the US players. April Sykes has been fantastic. Laurie Kane's been great. Um, 
most of them have made an impact at some stage this season. And we've been very guilty of overlooking our neighbours from yeah. New Zealand. There's a bunch of New Zealand players in the league this season, and they're all doing a great job. Uh, Natalie Taylor, Lisa Wallbutton, Michaela Cox, Tony Edmondson, Ange Marino. I don't know if I've missed any. Uh, Kate McMeekin, McMeekin Rusco is uh, an assistant coach. So there's really a Kiwi influence around the league. You're right, GB. We're guilty as charged on that one. They are integral parts of their team and have been, you know, for a long time, the New Zealanders in this league. Just great people to be around first and foremost. I, I doubt whether anyone would have a bad word to say about the teammates you've mentioned. Um, they just really play for the singlet they wear. And, um, yeah, having big seasons too, a few of them, and, and teams that are, you know, doing well. Obviously, the two girls over in West Coast are part of a rebuilding mm. phase over there. But... Yeah, really good to see and yeah, shame on us. Yeah. Can you understand what they're saying when you talk to them? <laughs> Usually a nod and smile does all right. A point guard just get away with some hand signals when I've played with them. But yeah, um, Pretty happy with that. <laughs> no, they're just great people to be around, yeah. Well, there you go. So don't forget, when we're talking imports, we are including from now on the New Zealanders. <laughs> Correct. That's not a bad attempt at an accent. Okay. And of course, we mentioned Tony Edmondson and Lisa Wallbutton with the West Coast Waves and... I don't know if this is good or bad, but the Waves got a hold of the uh, Lights Up portable roving camera. And let's see what they came up with during their time off. Hi, I'm Tony Edmonton. And I'm Lisa Wallbutton, and we're the West Coast Waves Kiwi Connection. Tony, that's quite a thick accent you've got there. Where's that from? Uh, I'm actually from Christchurch in the beautiful South Island of New Zealand, or otherwise known as Quake City. So living in Perth now, what brought you over here? Uh, well, I moved over to Australia three and a half years to play basketball and um, just the opportunity to play in such a nice place like Perth, I um, probably just couldn't, couldn't sort of say no to the opportunity, I suppose. Who's better at rugby, New Zealand or Australia? New Zealand. Where was the pavlova created? New Zealand. What's that on your foot? This one right here. It's a jandal. What's your favourite band? Uh, 660. Favourite meal? Fish and chips. If you were to buy a pie from the dairy, what must you always do? You must always blow on the pie. Now, what part of New Zealand are you from? I'm from West Auckland. Oh, very nice. And I hear there's a uh, famous television show filmed there? Uh, yes, Outrageous Fortunes was filmed in West Auckland. Uh, and for those of us who haven't seen that show, what's the uh, basic premise of the show? Um, it's basically about a family of bogans. Where would you say are the best beaches? Uh, Australia or New Zealand? Probably New Zealand. Big Nat! What's your pre-game routine? Um, I eat a banana. Eat a banana? Yeah. Does it work? Does it work for you? I think so. I think so far, so good? Yeah. <laughs> eat something, sleep, drive you, get girls to come my legs. <laughs> um, that's about it, really. Take my... <laughs> you got a green ribbon. Where's the pink? I thought I'd go green today. Hold the yeah. look at. Nice big bottle of parcel and parcel cup. Which will make me a bit sleepy, so I go home and have a nice nap, get up, shower, wash and straighten my hair every day. And then, have a nap. Every game it changes. Um, <laughs> this doesn't really routine. I don't have a set one. Today it was a bit of retail therapy. Um, I had to spend some money. <laughs> Quit shopping. Keep your mind off the game. Quit shopping. Game day, uh, wake up, gym. What are we? Uh, what are we left today? Oh, it's, it's pretty casual. Oh, oh, just oh. Whatever, get whatever you can. Um, shoot around with the team. Obviously, you're playing for that. And for the viewers, what's your max on bench press at the moment? Uh, <laughs> 150. <laughs> 150 kilograms or pounds? Kilograms. Oh, of course. That's, that's two of me. <laughs> <laughs> Have breakfast. Work out in the gym. Lift some heavy weights with the boys. And um, Kennedy's max is 150. What's yours? <laughs> On the bench press? Uh, I don't like the bench press. These barrel chest are doing up already, you know. <laughs> you tend to stick thing. to cardio? That's right. At my height, you don't want to get too bulky. <laughs> <laughs> Fieldo, pre-game routine. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, after shoot around, just walk around the shop, have some lunch, and then chill down at home. That's about it. A bit of a sleep for the game. Some food, of course. And a bit of a rub-down massage. 
Any tips for anyone that wants to, you know, play in the WNBL when they grow up? Yeah, just stick to what you know. We were all there once and we're all young, inspiring athletes. And just if you love the game, keep going, working on your skills, and one day you could be wearing one of these. Pre game routine, oh, definitely a bit of sunshine here in Perth, WA, and I reckon that's about it. I saw today you went to the cricket. Yeah, I had an uh, afternoon spent at the cricket, it was fabulous. Did you, did you coach? No, I didn't coach, just sat and watched. Offer any feedback? Oh, I've always got feedback on cricket. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think about your uh, fashion accessory there? I'm kind of <laughs> challenged in the fashion department, so anyone that wants to style me, I'm more than welcome to Do you take think it. that that boot is going to be on um, that? Ford Runway in I New York. I would like somebody to pimp my boot, and so I think the girls got some things in mind, so it could be the best bedazzled boot going around. Okay, well there we go. There's uh, a little insight into the West Coast Waves and what they are getting up to on and off the court and anywhere in between. They look like a great group of girls. Yes, from all reports, they're a lot of fun to be around. So they've won three games now this season and they will surely be looking to build on this uh, before Christmas and when the season resumes in the new year. Just as uh, we will resume again on Friday with our final pre-Christmas look at the WNBL. Don't forget, you can follow the WNBL at the official webpage, or the official website, I should say, wnbl.com.au. You can follow the league on the Facebook page and on the Twitter, which is at WNBL. You can get on to Shaz at Sharon Milner 4. I keep forgetting that one. Or Desi Globe, it's 6. That is it for this show. Until we say thank you to our sponsors. And it all starts with IINet. Champion. ABC. Australian Sports Commission. Sporting Pulse. Sporting. And ANFA. That's it for part two. We've got one more to go until we sign off for Christmas. Until then, that's it from Lights Up.